Hello everybody and welcome back to the Storm Poker Challenge. My name is Dylan and this is another video in our Riders of the Storm series for MyBet.com. We're looking for some tens and aces. Yeah, now it dies. Oh, although the ace plays, look at that. So he got counterfeited. So he had a pair of fours, but there's a pair on board and a better pair came and our ace plays and he gets knocked out. So it was, I mean, it's a coin flip pre-flop and we ended up taking it down. That's also a really good one for the video, I think. A lot of guys don't know about that counterfeiting deal with those small pairs. All of a sudden he was playing the board and yeah. We had the better kicker. <laughs> so yeah, that was it, guys. Uh, on this tournament, what I'm going to do now is just put us on another storm table. Now we're going to run three while we're playing this tournament out. So off we go, guys. This queen six suited, I'll probably raise up if it's folded to me, but I'm not going to be flatting or re-raising. Maybe a guy raising here, I might re-raise as a bluff, but yeah, definitely not something in the middle positions. Right, and the ace five suited. Instead of raising it, you know, from time to time you can limp these really speculative hands. Uh, steal with a 10 8 off. Take it down uncontested. And here we definitely want to isolate. Button just limps. Isolate here with our weak ace. Flop the ace, however. Half pot it. How many times do they need to fold for us to break even? <laughs> I'll let you guys rewind the tape. I won't spoil the uh, suspense there. 70 on this is not going to be a call because, you know, with your suited aces, guys, it's not like with your pocket, your small mid pockets, right? When you hit the flop, if you don't hit that ace, you're often going to be hitting a draw. So, as you guys know, when you're holding any two suited cards, you're going to flop the flush draw about one time in eight, more or less. And you're only going to flop the full flush. Um, 118 to 1 again, so one time in 119 flops with suited cards where you flop the actual flush. It's just highly unlikely, so that means with your suited aces, your suited kings, uh, you want to have a bit more than just odds going for you when you make those calls. And again, just flopping the flush uh, draw alone, right, is more or less 8 to 1 again. So don't, you know, it looks good actually smells bad, just be real, real careful when you're playing those. You, you really want to be in position, kind of over-calling, in position, um, or over-limping, better case, when um, you can outplay the guys post-flop also when you do miss, as you often will. All right, and yeah, of course, I don't know if you guys actually saw the video that we played earlier, uh, the session we played earlier, but we had a yeah, really decent session before this tournament started up, and yeah, we've got no worries for the entire return on the day so far. Uh, 79, he just mins and we'll just flat. And again, guys, this min, min business is often because they think you've, you may have hit, uh, you may have actually clicked the, um, you may have clicked the auto fold button, which we never do, of course, for exactly that reason. <laughs> and we flop the open and straight draw, miss big. And here we half it again. Here we have it again, and 79 can't make that call, I believe, with those odds, so I'm gonna let that go. So here we pick up an open and a straight draw. We got 18 versus this guy's 60 something. Um, we can shove this right now. Um, however, I think the three quarter pot's gonna get us there as well. And he lets it go. So the problem with shoving on that turn is that you're only going to get called with the worst hand. I would forgive me with a better hand, and it's a bit, it's a, you know, it's a bit of a pricey move versus a deep stack player that's got you covered. Uh, here, the ace queen, we're going to just go ahead and raise up three times as well. And that, actually, I could have popped that to four times since there were basically two over callers. But yeah, no biggie. Here we check one. Ten comes. He yeah, if he checks again, you know, then we definitely bet that. But he doesn't. He bets into it full pot. And we let that go. Ace queen out of position. We take a big swing to miss. That means more than likely one or two of these guys are also on aces of some kind. Uh, some ace x hand. And yeah, they they all check to us. Four comes. Now we yeah, you know we've got the inside straight draw to the two. <laughs> but that's about it. And I'm not happy when I see an ace either. Um, maybe a queen. <laughs> Shit. Um, so if he checks again, we, again, the only way we can take this down 
Not with our ace high, that's for sure. So we'll make it a, about 660, a little less than half. And take it down uncontested. That's a hell of a good result in a four-way pot. <laughs> Six max with the ace queen. Uh, so all right, we're on the uptick. And 93, uh, unfortunately, we got auto-checked there because of the talking head here on the mic that never stops. Uh, all right, so we check, he pots it, good thing, and we just duck out. 86 suited, would have been a raise for a steal, but not, uh, yeah, we could also re-steal, uh, yeah, I'd say we could just three bet that guy from the cutoff, making his little steal raise, and probably got away with it. Also post-flop, because we had what? Both position and initiative, right? The pit principle, position and initiative, equals profit in the long run. Both six max and full ring. All right, 56 suited. We're just going to open race here from the hijack. 33, definite, definite raise, steel raise from the small. And the good thing is, yeah, when he makes this kind of big race here, we're playing a mutual big stack. So I've got 10 times the amount to call. I'm looking for the three I'm set mining here with my call. Damn. Swing and a miss. King's also on board. I can bet that, but uh, you know, this guy, if he re raises, he's going to probably take a shot nine times in ten. He does not. That's unexpected. Um, and now, you know, it's three suited, half potted. Maybe he lets it go if he doesn't have the king or is worried about it. Um, now it's six, seven, nine, ten. Any eight is good, probably. Um, any, yeah, of course, the king is good, and again, I've only got one way to take this thing down. That's a half pop bluff on the river, and he lets it go. So don't, you know, even out of position, guys. If you're if you're playing, you know, a race preflop, he bet it, I flatted. If he's not on the king, right, um, he's in trouble already. It was three suited, and any eight would take that down, right? So again, if you got one way basically to take that pot, make your half pot bet. <laughs> You only got to take it down one time in three to break even, and that's you know that's something that I think a lot of new and rec players don't really don't really get. It's something you should definitely include. And again, um, you you know you're not always going to take it down. It's not always that they're going to lay down for you like that. Um, here I'm just going to flat one in position. But yeah, it, it will work out a lot. And again, it only needs to work out one time in three to be plus minus zero EV. Uh, okay, yeah, he's excited about that. And uh, we can flat again and then bet the bet the river, but that's getting expensive already. The pot's getting bigger, and I think I'll just duck out. Um, Seventy-eight would have been the flopped, seventy-five to one straight. <laughs> um, but sixes and fives, you know, could have been flopped as sets. And yeah, who knows? Maybe nine king, but yeah, just wasn't feeling it. Another good thing is, guys, um, you know, we're playing a mathematical game. Uh, we're also playing a psychological positional game, but. One thing I would never underestimate, and it's something that you guys should definitely take to heart, and that is listening to your gut. You know, if you got a good feeling, fine. Make sure there's some mathematical reason also to go along with the gut feeling. But if you got a bad feeling, right? Um, yeah, listen to your gut. You know, not not always. If you got a very clear mathematical play, why not? But don't you know? Don't just ignore intuition. Right, that would be a mistake. It'd be as big of a mistake as people only playing with intuition and never looking at actual um, strategy and tactics and the math behind everything. So yeah, it's a good combination of both. And as I'm always saying, you know, poker is a game of both, both skill and luck. Ninety-eight. Wow, we flop it again. So seventy-five to one is that flop? We half it. Hopefully, he's got the jack <laughs> and plays back at us. Does not. We just take it down straight, and here we flop our, you know, flush draw. Uh, Six hundred. He checks to us, and I'm just going to shove this and hold my breath. <laughs> right on. So again, same principle. You know, if I make a half pot bet, I'm committed. You know, my pot is at least the same size or close to my stack size. I've got, you know, I've got the flush draw. King's on board. He checked to me. I've got position. I think I've got a lot more fold equity than I normally would, and I just decide for the shove, given the stack to pot ratio. And it's also when I, you know, when I shove on the flop, that's if I miss the turn, right? Then um, you know I have much more equity on the flop when I shove. And that's um, yeah, that was the idea, and he let it go. 
happy about that. Uh, Ace King, big swing and a miss yet again. Check, check. And again, this time I'm just going to check behind and opt for the delayed C bet if they check to me. You know, you don't have to C bet 100% of all flops by any means, guys. Uh, so we, you know, we check behind, then he donks, and then he gets flatted, right? And now our Ace King is very clearly dead, and we can let that go for cheap. All right, five Zs. Out of position versus two players is also going to be a check, guys. No set, no bet. We whiffed. All good. You know, you can you can make those moves, but when when you're making again, when you're making those bluff moves, it, in general, it is good to have position, right? So this guy over here making that bet is is a good idea. Yeah, we check into two players and let it go. Versus maybe one player in a heads up pot, I might go ahead and um, make a move there. You know, um, dunk into it, bluff it. But not always. Again, I, I think if you guys stick in general to the to the pit principle, right? Position and initiative. You'll be you'll be way ahead of the game, you know. In almost almost all scenarios, uh, at the low stakes. Here I'm gonna flat one here for the miracle, <laughs> and maybe even pick up the button. Wow. Okay, so we got last position with our limp. That's pretty sweet. Flop the king, and we're gonna see what we can't do here. Uh, sixty-three. So six, seven, eight is no good. Yeah, we're totally toast here. I'm going to float this guy. All right, so I flat once. If they check to me, I'd bet. I didn't want him to actually call that, but... Nah, shit. Okay. Floats out of... Yeah, floats now out. The the, the continuation of this float would be then to raise. Um, but you're going to get into a big big pot afterwards, and that's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The float idea is now way, way out of my mind. Uh, we'll just play on. You know, when he checks, then I, then I give it another shot. If not... Forget it. All right, and above, I should probably say a few things to the tournament up here. Okay, what we've got here, guys, is basically 2,400 left in our stack, and the blinds are now. Let's go ahead and fill this up. Yeah, the blinds are now 50 and 100 with no ante. All right, so that means effectively we have 24 big blinds in our stack. So we are in so-called middle phase play. And in middle phase play, uh, for those of you who have read maybe Dan Harrington on Hold'em, uh, his book on tournament play, or if you've read um, even better, <laughs> yeah, if you read the book, then Kill Everyone, or even a book that I can very much recommend, a little less known as a Tournament, I think it's called Killer Tournament Poker, something like that, by Tony uh, Guerrera. Really, really brilliant poker coach and theorist. And yeah, definitely definitely check out those books uh, when you can, but right now we're at 24 big blinds, playing a middle phase strategy. And unfortunately we got a guy that's got us basically covered at least two and a half times. Uh, the rest of the table is more or less the equivalent of our stack. So this is the big guy that we're, you know, don't really, really want to get into it with. And we want to attack as well as we can these other guys. Problem is the big stack player is directly to our left. So this is kind of shit luck concerning our seat uh, at this point. But, you know, we want to be targeting the other fellas. <laughs> and this guy, of course, when we got it, you know, we got it licked. You know, our lock, stuff like that. But here with 24, any, anytime you're between, you know, 28 to about 15 big blinds, you got a really good, effective uh, stack for resteal pushing. And anytime you get underneath, I would say at the bare minimum 13, but even, you could probably even say underneath 15, you're in so called push or fold modus. So that means you're not making, you know, normal raises, uh, normal bets, stuff like that. You're shoving or letting it go pre flop. And yeah, that's that's the big difference between tournaments and cash games uh, in a lot of regards. Uh, we flopped top set here. I think actually I'm just going to make a smaller bet and try and drain him a little bit. We'll see what he does. He'll probably just let it go. Oh, nice. He check raises us and we push. Brilliant. Oh, no, but we don't, again, we don't want that two or seven happening. I, I, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, don't worry. Be happy. Where'd you go, Bobby? Um, all right, so we get sucked out on yet again. Um, yeah, now we're just yeah, totally knocked out. We're yeah, under two big blinds, but we shove with, I'll show you guys that and actually in poker stove. 
you know, we shove, and that guy had, you know, he had he had he had eight cleanouts, right? So he was looking at like probably 32% equity to the river, right? So we we got it in good yet again, I think, on this table over here on this tournament. We got it in probably as a 75% favorite, 70, 75, and over here we got it in as a yeah, 70 plus, more or less, a favorite and lost both. So guys, again, variant, you know, we got it in perfectly. We got it in as huge equity, you know, equity favorites, ended up losing. That's poker, that's why it's not chess. <laughs> All right, so let me let me go ahead and pull up um, poker stuff and show you guys exactly what that looked like. But first, we pick up nines, and this is our all-in shove move. <laughs> Should I turn up the uh, techno here in the background? <laughs> yeah, so we shove. I mean, this guy should call. You know, pretty much any two, uh, especially if there's an overcaller anywhere. And. Yeah, I mean, when you guys see somebody make a call here with like 2-7 or something like that, or 7-king, for example, that's a good call. Um, you know, a lot of people would hit the roof and say, oh, how could you call that? And actually, he's only calling, you know, he's getting like 3 or 4 to 1 odds, you know. And, yeah, it's a very clear and easy call. So, luckily, you know, luckily for us, we, we actually ended up holding here as 70% favorites. But, yeah, that's, that's how that went down. Uh, looks like we're going to be on a break here shortly. And I'll pull up Poker Stove to show you what I was talking about. All right, so this is a calculator that I've created for uh, the people I coach and also for my own game. And as you guys see here, we've got the big blind anti players at the table, uh, effective stack, or uh, forgive me, your stack, the hero stack. And this is the breakdown of the N, right? So called, uh, so called N here, and the total amount of big blinds you have remaining in your stack and the big blind as a function of your stack. Total orbit costs are what you'll pay every time the button goes around one time. So in our example here we've got big blind of 100, no antis, 10 players I believe, one, two, what do we got? Uh, let's call it nine. And 2417 was our stack size. All right, so we had again, in a very simply 24 big blinds as we had mentioned actually in the in the recording itself, effective M of, uh, of 16, um, or sorry, a normal M of 16 and an effective M of then more or less 14 and a half. Alrighty, so yeah, these are recommendations um, in general, very, very, very um, summarized from Dan's book there and his M recommendations. But yeah, I mean, we're in small ball, resteal push modus, more or less, given our stack size. And we catch sixes. Um, and we decided to open it up from early, yeah, early mid position. All right, and that's how this went. So we go ahead and raise it up 3x, right? So we've got another 21 big blinds remaining in our stack. And I'm going to go ahead and bring down uh, Poker Stove below. So once this tournament kicks back off, we still got our, um, our shove stack here, four big blinds. And yeah, we're just waiting for our wave here, and we'll see how that how that works out. In the meantime, I'll just explain this very last hand. Um, you know, using our calculator here, our tournament calculator and poker stove to kind of go over the details. All right, so we raise it up three times with the remaining stack of twenty one big blinds. We get a fold, 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 and a flat. Okay, this guy cold calls, so called flat calls. And he's making a decent call also with the hand that we know that he ends up having. All right, he at uh, uh, five ten is going to be a big. Okay, <laughs> a lot of guys at this at this stage would of course just just push any two, um, and we probably should. <laughs> um, let's see here. What's the magic number after all the late registrations? Eighty one. All right, and remaining we have 337. All right, so there's no way in hell we're going to get there, so that will be a call, um, more than likely. <laughs> so he lets it go, and again, why not? Just end our misery. And or, and or double up. Even better. Ooh, bad. He's got an overpair, so we're way killed here. Running fives or tens? <laughs> Uh, also no diamond, no dice, and we're out. 
All right, and again, yeah, you could also let that go and then play for your two and a half big blinds after the fact with, you know, 300 plus uh, players remaining, and you got to get down to what we just showed you guys of uh, 81. So, you know, after that, after that bad beat, that was pretty much it. You could have potentially found a fold there and then played on, but again, <laughs> what are you gonna do? Uh, chip in a chair, it does exist. Then we could have, you know, we could have run back with maybe the two and then 2.8 big blinds. Who knows? But we're gonna be in the small blind again, and yeah, again, we just had the two big blinds. We could have totally, totally rocked up and figured that out, but whatever, no big deal. All right, so let's let's finish this hand up. We've got sixes here. We open it up, and this guy flats with threes for set value. And also here, you know, he's calling basically 250, and that times 10 is, you know, within the, the realm of, of flatting for set value still. No problem at all. So, here we go. This guy decides to let it go, and the flop comes. And again, we flop top set, and we know what he has already, but we, you know, we can't know that at this point in the hand. So what we're going to do is give him an entire range here in poker stove, right, for flatting. And what I would say is that he'll have any pair for sure, but he wouldn't be flatting aces, kings, queens, jacks, maybe not tens either, um, but for the largest flatting range, maybe he would just flat tens, who knows. Okay, good. Uh, he wouldn't flat ace their kings, uh, ace, king, ace, queen suited, I don't think. He might have flatted something like this. Right, I can see that happening. I can see him flatting a lot of max stretch suited connectors potentially to put him on a really wide range. Uh, we'd also give him some broadways, stuff like that. And he may, I mean, if he's really, really wild, he may have even flatted, you know, any other weaker ace suited. Maybe the ace 10, all right? It's a full 16% flat range. <laughs> and that's really, really wide, all right? But let's just go ahead and plug that in and see how we stand. Pre flop. We're about, you know, it's not exactly so. Let's call it 9%, whatever. Okay, that's again quite, quite wide. And I think, you know, maybe he flats. These guys might check out. Maybe something like this. Right, bring it down to 12%. All right, and now we're you know we're flipping either way. Good. Here comes a flop. Six fifty four two suited. Oh no, uh, single suit. Sorry, that's a two suited replay. Our two color replay. Uh, five spades and the four clubs. Very good. And you know we've got top set here, and we're looking just really really good against his entire range, right? at 89.6%. Now, what happens? <laughs> he checks, and we make the smallish bet, trying again to, to get paid off here a bit. Not much to protect against it. You know, I did mention, mention in the videos, if he's got threes or, or sevens, you know, we're a little bit worried. Um, but, yeah, take a shot here, a smaller, smaller deal, and he actually check raises us, which is, given his hand what we'll see here shortly a uh, really good idea because it's a really strong semi bluff push right it puts the last question to me right and he shoves what we come to know are his pair of threes very very strong move now let us uh, just to show you that it was a pair of threes <laughs> so here we go if we go ahead and clear this and just either give him threes or sevens on his shove or actually fours or fives, because I think he would also shove that. I think you'd probably check shove also the sevens, eights, and nines, right? Um, if this were two suited, he might shove also over pairs that were suited uh, of the same suit, so to say. So over card draw plus the flush draw. In this case, it was a mono, or it was a rainbow board, so you got to basically cut those out. So we give him this entire pair range for his check shove on the flop. Good. How do we look there? pretty much exactly the damn same, right, at 82%. So <laughs> against his range, you know, really reduced range, um, we're looking at, you know, to be basically a four, four and five favorite. Yeah, hard, hard luck. And if we only put him on the hand that we, after he called, actually put him on, 
<laughs> and a pair of threes or a pair of sevens, right? And I guess this would have been on the list as well. Um, the 32, I don't see him him flatting by any means. And the 37, right? 37 pre-flop, he's not going to flat either. So, yeah, more or less this. And let's see if there were anything else that we could have added to that. Maybe 7, do we have maybe a 7... Seven nine suited could have flatted. Maybe the seven A's. Maybe the A's three. Okay, good. Why not? <laughs> Just show you guys a couple things how you can play with it. That markedly changes it, right? That brings us down to about fifty eight percent. But we're still a big favorite, right? The fifty eight percent, even against this um, open ended straight draw range, plus any uh, under flop set or over pairs. And now we know exactly what he holds. And here we go. And let's make it real specific, right? Three diamonds, three O spades. And that's going to be real close. Good. So we get it in as a three, yeah, 75% <laughs> favorite. And he ends up sucking out. He is going to take it down one time in four, more or less, right? And that was unfortunately one of those times, guys. It's called variance. That's called a bad beat. It's called a suck out. You're going to hear it referred to in a lot of different ways. <laughs> Uh, with more or less emotion depending on whom you're playing with but yeah you know we flopped the miracle he flopped a decent draw made a good check shove right that's a really good move against my entire range because I'm gonna have missed that flop a lot too right so Bravo this guy's play was actually very good I, I've got nothing against his shove there given the circumstance I think it's a fine play and yeah our call was good as you guys saw you know we got it in both of our tournaments as pretty much 70 75 percent favorites and yeah, struck out pretty hard. Hence, while you're waiting for your wave, guys, back to our, um, yeah, the initial topic of this video, you can be running your um, cash game tables on the side. And I think just to, just to close this video up, what I'll do is go ahead and set up a four table storm cash game situation, which is what we're gonna be playing from here on out.